Well, today's topic, we're looking at the uh, story of Jesus' birth, and if you want to follow along, uh, you can get out the Bible in the rack in front of you. It's red in color. Uh, maybe you brought a Bible from home. We're going to start in the Gospel of Luke that's towards the back of the book, and in this Bible, the page numberings start over towards the end, so we're going to be on page 59 all the way in the back, Luke 2. We're going to start where we were uh, last night. So if you uh, were at the Christmas Eve service, uh, you heard this story, and uh, we read it just a moment ago. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. It's very unlikely that Emperor Augustus thought when he was uh, deciding to tax everybody and do it in the most inconvenient way possible, it's very unlikely that he thought, you know, I'm going to do God's will today. Uh, but there are rulers all across the world who, in spite of their best efforts, are doing God's will, are doing things that God has set aside to do hundreds of years beforehand. Uh, so sometimes you can look on the political landscape or your home front or the school environment you're in or something and think, this is a mess. There is no way God could use this, God could move through this, but that's just not true. God can m move through people. Our lesson that we read just a moment ago, uh, Cyrus was not a follower of God on purpose in terms of the covenant with Israel. But Cyrus did God's will when he was born, which was hundreds of years after God said, you know, Cyrus, he's going to do my will. Uh, so uh, in this case, the Emperor Augustus did something that God had set aside for people uh, centuries before. Uh, God had said, my son, the Savior of the world, is going to be born in Bethlehem and Augustus is now setting that up. Uh, verse 2, this was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Verse 6, while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And last night we uh, took a look a little bit at this verse, and I want to emphasize it again today, that a lot of times Jesus shows up when everything is full. Your life is full. There's no place left for Jesus to plug in. And in order for, to make room for Jesus, you're going to have to disconnect some things or not have Jesus there. Most of us have a, a slate of things that we do all day long, even if it's wasting time, even if it's sitting in front of the television all day long. Uh, you've got your favorite cha uh, channels and shows that you need to watch. Um, I visited an uh, older member uh, one point, and uh, he was deaf, so he had the television at, I don't know what, but it was a measurable decibel level. It was not quiet. It, it basic, in order for us to talk, I had to shout uh, over the television, which he kept going the whole time I was there, uh, and because he didn't want to watch the, he didn't want to miss the Jerry Springer show. You never know when somebody might have gotten clubbed with a chair on their head or something. So, uh, so Jerry Springer and his guests are not quiet either, right? So they're making as much noise as they can. The volume is up as high as it can, and I'm shouting over it to try and say hi to this guy. We had a conversation, and I left, and I thought, you know, Jerry Springer really is his family. You know, he's 90. He doesn't get out. Uh, aside from the occasional vis visits from random people, he's got the television, that's all he's got. Um, so, uh, so I was kind of rude, I guess, interrupting the family reunion that he was having. Uh, but there, uh, all of us have 
things that we are engaged with. And if you're going to make room for Jesus, something's got to go. When uh, Jesus arrived in Bethlehem, everybody had already, when Jesus arrived in Mary's womb in Bethlehem, everybody had already taken all the places. It was full. And so Mary and Joseph wound up in the barn, uh, in the place where all the cows and animals were, and, uh, and the donkey that they rode in probably was right there with them. Uh, Verse 7, she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So in your life, if you send God out to the outhouse or out to the, you know, the, the place in back that's not very nice, God will take it. There are some people who are too proud, but that's not God's posture. God is shockingly humble and willing to accept whatever we're willing to give. So if you say to God, God, you cannot come into my school. You cannot come into my place of business. These secret sins that I've got, they're no place for you. But I'll give you Sunday morning at 930. That's what God will take. Uh, and this innkeeper, if he at some point, he's going to appear before Jesus, right? Yes. He's going to see... Everybody's gone. He's going to see God, and he's going to see Jesus, and the innkeeper is going to know two things. And so it's going to be hard to decide, should I be happy or sad? I didn't let him stay in my inn, but uh, at least I gave him a place in the barn. Uh, but it was kind of smelly. Not a great place to be born. Uh, so the innkeeper is going at some point with more understanding to revisit his actions. When he allowed Mary and Joseph to be in the barn, he didn't know that it was the Messiah about to be born in his barn. He didn't know that it, it was the uh, mom of someone that people would be worshiping 2,000 years later. He might have changed up the arrangements if he didn't know. But all of us have Jesus come, sometimes in disguise, uh, into our lives. God comes into our lives, and, and it, sometimes in a form that's unrecognizable. Sometimes uh, we're not paying enough attention in our spirit, which is the only way because visibly, it's just a baby on a very inconvenient time when the emperor has messed everybody up and forced them to go wandering all over the country to go to their hometown. There are times when it's only looking back that we say, oh, God was moving at that point in my life in a powerful way, and I didn't recognize it. But as much room as you give God, if you say, God, I know that the school's official policy is that you can't be here, but I'm inviting you here, and everywhere I go in this school campus, I want you to be with me. God will take that. Uh, so one question for us to think through over the course of the next few days is, how much room are you giving to God? How much room are you giving to Jesus? Where are you allowing Jesus to stay in your life? Is it just out back? Is it right up front? Is it in your whole life? Where are you letting Jesus stay? Verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Uh, I want to think this through. It's possible that there were angels around Jesus that were invisible. I know, I'm pretty sure, uh, the crash that's out there, does that have an angel in it? Do you remember, Pat? 
Yeah, so we've got, uh, when you go for coffee today, there's going to be a little manger scene with Mary and Joseph, maybe some camels, maybe some wise men, maybe some shepherds, uh, and an angel. Did the angel get to go visibly to hang out with Jesus? The answer is no, just in case you don't. So let's try that again. Did the angel get to go and visibly hang out with Jesus? No. The angel's assignment was to go out into the fields to talk to the shepherds. These were the uh, McDonald's workers of the day. No disrespect for McDonald's workers. This was the entry-level job position. Um, shepherding. So the angel got to go see all the people doing the late shift Christmas Day at McDonald's. Uh, and verse 9. The angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I don't, obviously I don't know what angels think. But if the angel were a human, don't you think the angel would be thinking, wow, I could be seeing Jesus, and I'm out here with the shepherds. One of the things that is so difficult to understand, but so helpful when we catch it, is that it's better to be where God wants us than anywhere else in the world. If God says to you something like, I know you're really important, that's why I want you to go hang out with the shepherds instead of seeing my son at his birthday, it may not make sense to you, but if you honor God and do God's will, far better than seizing what you think would be good. I know I could go, but, but those shepherds, they've been there all year. They'll be there tomorrow. Today is the day of Jesus. I'm going to go to the manger. There are times when we could convince ourselves that we know better than God where we should be, what we should be doing, and every time you will discover, if you allow yourself the experiment, that it's worth it to follow God. And you can tell God the reasons that you'd rather do something else. But it's worth it to do God's plan. Uh, in this case, verse 9, the angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for... Does anybody know the next line? Yeah, I heard that. For all, right? For all. Uh, are you included in all? Oh yeah. A lot of people good at science, Venn diagrams, or math in that early stage. Yeah, we're, we're in, in, the, in the group all. We are there. Uh, Attila the Hun? Right in that group. Adolf Hitler? Right in that group. Uh, the person who just said the most offensive thing ever on Facebook that you read? Right in that group. Uh, you? Maybe not right next to Adolf Hitler and Attila the Hun, but yeah, you're in that group. So, good news of great joy for everybody. And here's what it is, verse 11. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Bethlehem, the city of David, what it had was a few gift shops where you could buy trinkets. King David slept here. King David ate here, hundreds of years ago. Uh, buy your King David postcards. Uh, but otherwise, there was nothing in Bethlehem except the promise, this is where the Messiah will be born and a full house because the emperor had decided everybody should be taxed and to do it in an inconvenient way. And Mary and Joseph, because they were from David's lineage. And Jesus, who was born in a cow's feeding trough because that was the only place that the innkeeper had 
room for him. Maybe you have room, more room for Jesus in more of your life than the innkeeper did. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who's the Messiah, the Lord. Bethlehem was just a little dusty, out of the way spot. This night, filled with angels, announcing to shepherds, you'll find a baby. Verse 13, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and said, they got scared at one angel. What do you suppose they were feeling when there are multitudes of angels? Okay, so uh, for people who were here last night, how many choir members were there? Was that eight, nine, something in that range? Yeah, so uh, it was really great. It was awesome. It sounded f great. And then that was eight, and multitudes of angels uh, suddenly praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Uh, verse 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, okay, deal me in, you got another, uh, let's play the next hand. No, uh, they didn't resume their common everyday activity, looking for sheep, hanging out. They said, we're going to do something different today because we've heard that today is different. Let us go into Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known for us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. Mary and Joseph didn't get to see the angel. I know he's in the crush. Mary and Joseph didn't get to see him at this point in their lives. They got to hear secondhand. All of heaven is singing God's praises about what happened in this barn because the innkeeper didn't have any room. So let me look at my notes and see if there's anything else that you absolutely have to hear before we wrap this up. Um, just want to emphasize again, Jesus will take whatever you give him. So if uh, your school says Jesus can't be here, there will be a club that starts up on the school campus. And if the school says, you know, clubs here can't talk about Jesus, then Jesus will move out from that barn into individuals. But Jesus will take whatever you give him. Let's pray. God, uh, there are times when you show up and our life is full. Just like Bethlehem was full. And uh, sometimes when you show up, we just squeeze you out, keep you squeezed out. Sometimes we make a little tiny bit of room for you, far away, in an inconvenient, out of the way space. And thank you that some people hearing that you love them and understanding the gift that you offer are willing to make a large place in their life for you. Thank you for the people who put you first, God. For the people who say, no matter what, I'm going to love God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. And I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. For all the people today who uh, have so far not even given Jesus a place in the, in the barn, we ask that you help them to come to understanding of how good you are and how helpful it is to let your spirit flow through us. We praise you and we thank you. Amen.